easy does DJ Giddens make your play call? Uh, you know, pretty easy in those situations. Obviously, uh, DJ had a phenomenal evening that night uh, running the football. Um, you know, I think we looked and he had 11 forced missed tackles in one game, which is pretty dynamic. And, and it was uh, pretty clear that, you know, early on, uh, uh, we had to continue to feed him the football. And then when you go through a situation um, when Taekwon came in and just kind of easing him into that moment, when you have that tailback in the backfield, it certainly uh, um, certainly makes it uh, um, a lot easier. It certainly does. You've seen him make some defenders miss pretty bad the last two weeks in the open field. When did mm -hmm. you first notice that he was, was gaining that ability? You know, it, I think – any time we've known for a long time, DJ has a tremendous amount of ability. And just like any other football player, as you get more and more repetitions, what one of the things that I'm so impressed with, always known he'd been able to run through an arm tackle. He's a very physical runner. Um, you know, there's, there's one particular play where we ran a power play and the flat-footed safety was right down in the hole. And for him to make guys miss in the hole like he's making the miss in the hole, uh, you know, he just continues to improve on those things. You can go back to a year ago, and a year ago I know when we had challenged him pretty significantly going into the Central Florida game is really, I believe, where he began to gain more and more confidence. And it's just been building ever since. Did the blitz pick up kind of struggle as much as it looked, or how did you see that last week? Yeah, it was – it was interesting. If you look at, you know, our the first sack in the first series, um, we motioned a guy back in the backfield. The center recalled the ID to that motion guy, and we got a little bit confused. And then the tailback is is seeing if we're going to pick that guy up. They added on a safety, um, and number twelve for Colorado did a great job of. Uh, covering our primary route and man, which always makes it a little bit more difficult. So that was the first one. Um, the, the second one, I know it was also very similar uh, that, uh, you know, when they bring six guys, you got six one-on-one -on -one matchups. And interestingly enough, I know the tailback just kind of missed with his, with his hands. The, the safety came through the play side A, wrapped back to the back side A, and, and DJ just kind of missed with his hands. And the, and the pocket was collapsing, and credit them around him uh, for doing that. Um, you know, you can look at another pressure down in the red zone, and we ran a play action pass. Uh, and it's really actually quite unfortunate because DJ was prying wide open. And, uh, you know, we didn't have great technique on that play action pass by the, uh, by the play side tackle. And, and, and credit them, they pop back across. So from an assignment wise, you know, there's a little bit, but you can go back and look at uh, some of the adjustments that those guys made as far as um, where they were blitzing guys. And, and that, uh, that became evident. And then, then on the last one, um, you know, I think that we hung on a route a little too long. We had somebody coming open and, and they, you know, they came in and, and we knew we were going to get five down defenders um, versus a particular personnel grouping. When they uh, did that in the second half versus a different personnel grouping, um, I'll be honest, I was even a little bit awestruck. And so, uh, you know, we had to adjust to some of those things, but uh, uh, some of our technique in, in just finishing those blocks and credit them. Uh, in their defensive line. As a whole, six weeks in, what impresses you most about the offense? Right now is our continued growth in the sense of maturity. You know, and I think we took a huge stride this past week. Uh, I, I know a week ago we discussed um, overcoming adversity while we're in the comfort and convenience of our own backyard, and we've shown the ability to do that. And when you look back at this past weekend and where we need to continue to grow and find the confidence, yet still not um, be overconfident, uh, you can see we had uh, some adversity in that particular game. You know, whether it be not starting out fast in the first series, uh, you can look at then them getting the lead and us responding. Uh, you can look at early on in the second half, our quarterback coming out for a handful, I believe it was eight, maybe nine plays. And then you can look at, we were at one point, 
if I'm not mistaken, up 21 to seven. And ultimately, um, we're then down 28 to 24. And you didn't see the guys get nervous. You didn't see the guys, and, and I, granted, I'm not, I'm not down on the sideline. But from what I'm told and from my vantage point, the guys responded really well. And that is probably the most positive thing that I've seen um, with our group. Handling that, that environment, uh, I think, was a, was, a, was a big stride for us. I know that we had uh, a few false starts and credit their crowd, credit that environment. It was a dynamic, dynamic Saturday night, but that's where we got to continue to grow. And we've got an opportunity on a road in another very challenging place to play this upcoming week. I know West Virginia, at least it seems like, wants to do a little bit more too high safety looks and mm -hmm. I guess to take away the deep pass or take away some of those deep plays. Yeah, they, they're going to, you know, they're going to run a little bit more of, of zone coverage than what we saw this previous week. And, uh, um, I think, you know, 99% of the country is going to show a little bit more zone coverage than what we saw this previous week. So um, we're going to be prepared for both. They're, they are very active up front. They have always been very active up front, and I credit their head football coach. I credit their defensive coordinator and their defensive staff and their ability to do some things up front that are going to create the pressures where they don't necessarily feel all the time that they need to bring that fifth, sixth rusher. Um, but we ultimately need to be prepared to adapt and adjust no differently than we did this past Saturday night. Williams starting to get more and more playing time. Is he earning that through his blocking? Completely earning it through and, – and earning it through everything that he's doing. I know that um, the quarterbacks are getting more and more confident uh, with Will. And, you know, we discussed it kind of earlier this week. If, if Will isn't the most improved player – within our offense since week one to up to this point, then, then, then quite honestly, I don't know who is. And, and I think you hit the nail on the head with that confidence. And you can go back to the play that he made against Oklahoma State. And we as coaches, I tell guys all the time, you know, I can instill belief in you, but I can't give you confidence. You have to earn that confidence on your own. And Will, through his performance, especially these previous weeks, uh, has really earned the confidence that he's building in himself. And I'm, I'm just excited because he's going to continue to grow. We can look back a couple times, you know, where we got pressure and we got a lot of pressure last week where we're passing it off on a particular run scheme and we need him to come off on that backside backer. He didn't do that. He did it during practice, live bullets. I expect this upcoming week, he's going to do it. And I've got complete confidence and complete faith that he's going to do that. And that's the type of player, that's the repetitions, that's everything that he is right now. So I'm, I'm excited about his future. I really am. Time for one more. Where is Avery grown the most from week one to now? You know, I think that he is seeing progression reads a lot better. I really do. And he's getting more and more confident with his wide receivers. I, I, you know, we can say, gosh, you know, well, what about this summer? What about this? What about that? Guys, until you get into those live moments, you know, where you got that crowd and, and everybody else, that's where you're really seeing a ton of his growth. From a leadership standpoint, he's continuing to grow. He's not letting a negative play impact him. You know, we throw in, and he knew what I, he and I talked right after the game. You know, in that empty where we threw that, we, he kind of knew that, okay, if we, we do this, this guy's going to pop back out and go back to the other side. He knew it. Well, he came out and made three phenomenal throws. And, and he learned from those throws. And he said, okay, the first play of that last drive, I just overthrew it a little bit. I need to put a little bit more air under it. Okay, so then he gets through his progression. We get DJ back to that field flat, get an explosive play. We come back to it, and he just he throws a picture-perfect ball. So the message that we had last week is, in, in, as an offense, is our number one competitor is ourself. We have to continue to compete. We have to continue to improve from play to play. And if there isn't a better example of that than that exact scenario, because it is the same play, guys. You know, it wasn't this or that. It was the same exact play. And he just, just missed him. And two plays later, he learns, improves, gets better. And we had an opportunity to win the football game there.